Hi, I'm Derek Rosenberg. Uh, I'm a current undergraduate student at Oberlin College at Conservatory, and welcome to Modeling Analog Audio Circuits in Faust. In this workshop, I'm going to introduce the technique of wave digital modeling uh, using uh, the library which I've written, wavedigitalmodels.lib, which supports uh, creating wave digital models in Faust. Um, Hopefully, this workshop will be targeted at anyone who is interested in the modeling technique or analog uh, uh, or virtual analog modeling in Faust. Um, we're going to discuss a couple of simple circuits and also towards the end uh, discuss some of the more interesting challenges and uh, associated with implementing complex wave digital models in Faust. Um, so first, let's uh, start with just what is virtual analog modeling. So the virtual analog modeling is the answer that arises out of the question, how does one simulate an analog audio circuit in the digital realm? Um, and the first sort of step that you might take is something like black box modeling, which is basically looking at your circuit and its behavior completely irrespective of uh, anything that you might think is going on inside it. This would involve something like taking impulse responses of the circuit or doing sign sweeps, um, trying to figure out what the output characteristic of the circuit looks like based on the input characteristic, and then modeling that directly using simple DSP elements such as biquads or oscillators or uh, simple things like that. Another perspective is white box modeling, which involves uh, analyzing the behavior of the circuit itself, creating a physical model from that, digitizing that physical model, and then using that physical model in real time to compute the character. White box modeling includes techniques such as transfer function analysis, wave digital modeling, and uh, state space models. Um, in which you're actually using the Kirchhoff laws that uh, describe the circuit to create a uh, model that can then be... So ultimately, what we're trying to create is a model of the entire circuit's behavior. Um, one of the really cool things about wave digital modeling is that it's actually a modular approach in that instead of just with something like transfer function analysis, where we try and derive the entire behavior of an individual circuit, instead with wave digital models, we're going to try and work as discreetly as possible to digitize individual components and then uh, have them have congruent parts in the the final model and this is really beneficial because it means that it's much easier to change mo or modify the digital model without having to rederive everything associated with it so with wave digital modeling we can almost take a math light approach to uh, analyzing these circuits but here on the left we have a second order uh, passive low pass filter um, which is just formed with uh, two uh, resistors and two capacitors in a ladder structure. Um, and this is what this is the kind of circuit that wave digital models were originally created uh, for. On the right here, we have our wave digital model, which is a collection of nodes, which have uh, waves traveling between them. You can see that nodes have might have one connection to another node or several, um, but what's happening is each node has some connection to an element of the circuit, and these nodes are derived based on the individual element's Kirchhoff relationship. Um, if you're, yeah. Um, and digitized here, we see really two things, and this is a core aspect of wave digital filter or wave digital model theory, that uh, components and their connections are derived separately, where each resistor has an individual node, and then they're connected to other nodes which describe 
the the resistor's connection to uh the other circuit elements rather than having a resistance node being connected to say exactly what the resistor in the schematic is connected to um so one of the major problems here is this is what the implementation of this final circuit looks like in faust um and this is a frankly very very bulky representation um and coding something like this manually would be very painful. You lose almost all of the desired modularity uh, that you get with wave digital filters. So what I've wor been working on is a library which really greatly simplifies the process. And we can actually declare this entire model in just a couple lines of code, basically just by declaring our nodes, which correspond to pre-written functions in the library, which uh, have already you digitized the resistor, the capacitor, a voltage source, etc. Um, and then we connect them together in a data structure called the connection tree, which then is sent to other library functions, which will inspect the connection tree and uh, build the final model. And it makes creating these models quite easy and straightforward. All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate the code that I've just showed you in Faust. So here we can see this is, uh, we're just grabbing from the standard, excuse me, Faust libraries, uh, which already include the uh, all the adapters from Wave Digital Models. We use the prefix uh, WD to access all of the various functions. Um, and then we're just going to create our circuit which in this case is a second order filter. And if you see the corresponding things, when we call our model, we're doing a resistor, uh, two resistors of 47K each, and then uh, 47 nanofarads for our two capacitors. And if we run this, let me just add a little bit of code to make this nice and stereo. And then what I'll do is I'll declare as an input uh, no. Dot just grab a simple white noise function. And if we listen, that if we scroll over, we'll get a little bit of a description of what's going on with the node itself, um, including some detail and reference information in case you're interested in learning more about the node itself. Um, the same is true for functions like the build function uh, and as well as connection nodes inside the connection tree. Returning to our wave digital model, let's talk a little bit about uh, how this model itself is created from the circuit because it's not immediately obvious. Um, this is a simple enough case that we can do it pretty much by inspection. Those of you who are a little more familiar with circuits and electrical engineering would sort of notice the immediate topology of this circuit in that it's a resistor and a capacitor connected in parallel with a capacitor, and they're connected in series with a resistor and a voltage source. Um, very simple. And that is what's happening here. We have a voltage or we have a capacitor and a resistor connected in series, connected in parallel to a capacitor. And uh, then that's connected in series to a resistor and a voltage source. Taking a look at this rearrangement of the circuit, it becomes a little more obvious where what we've done is we've pulled out all of the components of the circuit, which would be things like our voltage source, our resistors, and our capacitors, and enclose them in their own boxes. Then we also have boxes which enclose topology. And these specific topological connection boxes correspond to the series node and the parallel node. Um, and that's really how we get this final uh, wave digital filter structure or wa yeah, wave digital filter, wave digital model structure. So um, another thing to be clear about, uh, I mentioned earlier the connection tree data structure um, and that has also an associated derivation. 
The connection tree is how the wave digital model is represented such that it may be computed easily. The reason why the wave digital model looks the way it does here is because this directly corresponds to the connection tree uh, thing, where we denote a specific uh, node to be our root, and then we have internal adapters which denote the connections, and then we have leaf nodes and the root which denote components. Um, and here, for example, node two corresponds to R1. So let's talk a little more about what's going on with our implementation here in Faust itself. Um, there are really three distinct parts. Um, the first thing is declaring the nodes which is basically we have specific resistances, specific capacitances, specific voltages that are going to be applied within this circuit. Um, and we need to uh, declare the nodes which correspond to those. Um, the second of which is declaring the connection tree, which is the data structure which I've been talking about. And then the last one is building the model itself in which you pass the connection tree to uh, one of the library's build functions, which uh, inspects the connection tree and creates the final model. So first of all, let's talk some specific syntax just for uh, using the library. Nodes are declared just by creating a function which is equal to one of the library nodes. Uh, for example, uh, Wave Digital uh, creating a resistor, you use the wd.resistor thing. Um, and this will create a resistor which has the component value R1. Um, all of the library nodes have various parameters which allow you to govern exactly the values or gains or associated uh, complexities with those nodes. Um, there are also a couple of different kinds of nodes. The resistor here is a regular node. Um, here we have an unadapted voltage node. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more later about what exactly what unadapted versus adapted means. Um, and then the last one is we the, the library also has separate nodes for components, which you want to take the um, output the output of your model from. So for example, in this one, we want our uh, output to be the voltage across capacitor two. So we declare, instead of just declaring it a regular capacitor node, we discover, declare it a capacitor underscore output node. Um, another thing that is really important here when declaring nodes is that we leave, that you leave this uh, build function parameter unparametrized. This is something which is used by the build functions in order to create the connection tree and you have to declare nodes of this form. And all of the nodes to the connection tree must be of this form as well. Um, another important aside, uh, it might be tempting to do so, but you cannot use the underscore or empty signal operator to declare a component's value. Um, there, is, there are tons of ways in which we can uh, get signal into our models, and I'll talk about those a little bit later, but it does not work to use the underscore that actually often will break the model. Um, the last sort of node which I wanted to mention is we have topological nodes in the library. You can just simply use them in the connection tree as you would any other node, or if you prefer, you can also declare them of the same form up here. Faust does not have a built-in method for declaring tree data structures. So the library uses its own metaprogramming representation of tree structures. And to do this, we use two things, the sequence operator and parallel construction. The sequence composition operator denotes a connection between two nodes or multiple nodes. Typically, this is traversing downwards in the tree. So for example, our node one, Vn, is connected directly downwards going to a series. So you can see we have Vn connected to the series. The other thing is that when you want to connect a node to multiple downward going nodes, as is say with like S2, what you're going to do is use parallel construction for the downward going nodes. Uh, so for example, 
with the wave digital dots with the series operator, the last one S2, that's connected to R2 and C2. So you just simply declare R2 and C2 in uh, a parallel list and then uh, apply the sequence operator and that denotes their connection. So last thing to talk about in terms of syntax is building the model. So once you have your connection tree data structure, what you do is you pass it as a parameter to one of the build functions. Um, there are a variety of these associated with it, but most often uh, you want to use the build tree function, which will automatically inspect it, create all the outputs, create all the inputs, do all of the recursive composition automatically, and set up the full digital signal processing structure without uh, too much input. Um, another thing that's really important and that uh, I would recommend as a coding practice is to declare all of your components and your connection tree within the scope of a model. This is really helpful because it allows you to fill various component parameters, which is something that you must do. You must fill all the component parameters as we talked about, I think two-ish slides ago, um, to in order to build the, the function. And also it allows you to declare things like inputs. Um, here I've pulled all of the relevant component constant quantities out into our parameters so that we could uh, modify them if we wanted, though you could declare, declare them explicitly within the model as well. Another thing which I recommend is to leave any desired signal inputs as the last parameters because in this way you can use them explicitly within your component declarations and then just simply leave them unparametrized when you call the model in your Faust function. Um, and in this way, Faust will automatically uh, treat the function as a parameter or an abstraction, and then your signal will be routed all the correct places. This is how you can create models with signal input rather than using the uh, empty signal operator, which as I previously said, should not be used for component uh, parameter declarations. All right, so now that I've gone over some more of the syntax, let's go ahead and take another look at our second order filter and do something a little more interesting with it than just uh, having to do all of this. So. Instead, uh, for a second order filter, I think it would generally be helpful to, instead of having it be in terms of all these resistance and capacitance parameters, let's just make this in terms of a cutoff frequency F naught. Um, now, what we need to do is provide the relevant values for our resistors and capacitors, which will do this. So first of all, let's just uh, say that our resistors are going to be equal. So we'll go ahead and say R2 equals R1. And then I'll also say, we'll just set them to a constant value, 1K is a good choice. Next, we need to declare our capacitance values. And resistance uh, in circuits is constant with respect to frequency, but we want our capacitance in order to uh, behave based on a cutoff frequency, it needs to be inversely proportional to cutoff frequency. So Again, let's just go ahead and set our capacitors to be equal. And then let's say C1 is going to be equal to 1 over our cutoff frequency, F times, in this case, uh, for uh, correct things to work, what we're going to want is 1.662 times 10 to the negative... And this has to do with just the electrical characteristics of the circuit itself. Um, hang on, I need to fix that, I think. Um, okay, so I'm getting, oh yeah, I'm applying too many parameters. <laughs> um, so now let's go in and say, okay, well, we want a cutoff, uh, a filter with a cutoff at 1000 Hertz. And now, hopefully, but now, since we just have it in terms of a cutoff frequency, 
Um, and you'll notice I'm doing the trick that I talked about earlier, which is declare our uh, constant parameters first and then our signal parameters later. Let's go ahead and make this in terms of, let's say, uh, a horizontal slider of V, what would it be? Um, we'll call this cutoff frequency. And we'll start this at 1000. It'll go down to 20 and up to 20,000. And we'll do it in increments of one Hertz. And now if we run it, we have a filter controlled by a slider. Alternatively, we could do something like make this a signal controlled filter, which will uh, control it based on uh, an input by doing it, just leaving this parameter also empty and then feeding, say, like a, a ADSR envelope into this. Um, one thing that I would really recommend is this does behave very similarly to a normal circuit. Um, in that what we're affecting here is our actual capacitance values. So if you were to do something like to feed in a negative capacitance, um, it wouldn't necessarily make sense to the circuit. Um, and the model may not necessarily behave in the way that you expect. Um, because that doesn't really equate to a physical property. Um, it, that, that could exist in this specific circuit. For this reason, I would sincerely recommend uh, performing some level of input protection on your capacitances and values. Um, the first one that I would recommend, uh, since we're, we're gonna go ahead and add to F naught just about 0 0.001 Hertz. Um, since this will have very little effect on the actual uh, cutoff frequency since it's not that exact of a value anyways, but it'll make sure that we never have a divide by zero error if we were to input a zero frequency. And the other one that I would recommend is to do abs absolute value of this such that it won't ever go below zero and uh, create an error that doesn't really make sense. Um, if you want to play with these things, obviously you can, but it means that the model might not necessarily obey the physical properties that you would immediately expect. Um, something which I haven't uh, talked about yet is the idea of adapting, which is the process which eliminates delay-free loops within wave digital structures. Again, when you have waves traveling in multiple directions, especially when you have uh, sort of, it, it's very easy to create loops. And in wave digital modeling, you must manipulate free parameters of the model such that there are no delay free loops. This process is, as I mentioned, mostly taken care of already by the connection tree, but it is really important that the connection tree be properly formed. Um, and to do that, you really only have to do two things, which is make the root of your connection tree an unadapted node, and then all of the other nodes within the tree must be adapted. Um, if you try and create a connection tree in the libra library which doesn't follow these rules, it's very likely to create errors. Um, so to talk a little bit more about adapting, um, like I said, it's a manipulation of a free parameter called port resistance. The library takes care of this process already by uh, automatically setting the port resistances as they should be. Specific circuit components cannot be adapted. They don't have uh, a manipulatable free parameter that can create this desired uh, non-reflective capacity. This occurs in particular with ideal linear elements and also all nonlinear elements. 
with ideal linear elements, we can simply just approximate these. So for example, while an ideal voltage source cannot be adapted, it can be approximated by using a resistive voltage source with a very, very small resistor in series with it. This is in particular a problem with nonlinear elements because nonlinear elements cannot be adapted. This means that in a circuit, with the current model presentation that I've shown, we can really only have one nonlinearity and it can only be a one port nonlinearity or have uh, one downward facing connection. This is obviously inconvenient because something like a transistor or a vacuum tube would require multiple port connections. Regardless, we can definitely, just with the, the theory that we've worked with so far, uh, do diode simulations, which are still a simple one port. They're unadaptable, so it will have to function as the root of our connection tree. But if we only have uh, just one diode, or there's a specific case that which has been solved where you have uh, diodes in anti-parallel and even multiple diodes in anti-parallel, um, which can just be resolved to a single node. And this is uh, really cool because this is a case that occurs in the uh, clipping stage of the Evanes Tube Screamer. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a very popular uh, guitar distortion pedal which uses diode clipping in order to generate um, distortion. Uh, this particular wave digital model is just simulating the distortion stage of the circuit. Um, and you can see this is actually a little different from some of the models that we've taken a look at so far in that it's occurring in actually a three-stage process. Um, this isn't anything special about wave digital models, but is actually a breakdown of the specific op amp construction that you can find in circuit theory. Um, where it's broken down into three distinct stages for this specific uh, inverting op amp style. Um, and you can see what we get is three distinct uh, wave digital models in which we have um, three different connection trees associated with them. And you can see the root is the grayed out box. Returning to our Faust IDE, uh, you can see that our code is growing in size a bit, but we're still mostly just using built-in library functions, um, declaring all of the different three stages, as we uh, saw earlier, in uh, different sections, and then uh, linking them all up in a final model. You can see here we're using the diode anti-parallel node in the, in the uh, C stage, which uh, takes as an input a saturation current and a, uh, a thermal resistance, as well as the number of diodes in uh, forward and backwards configuration, and then we'll simulate that node using a uh, custom written Lambert function solve. Uh, other than that, pretty much the construction is all the same that we're seeing here, where we have specific uh, capacitor and resistor values, um, voltage sources, a resistive voltage input, and uh, pretty much that's all that's going on here. You'll notice here that in addition to just the simple wave digital models, which are all encompassed in stage A, stage B, and stage C, we also have added input protection and on state. Um, these are additions which I talked about. These are in line with what I talked about earlier in that this is attempting to simulate a physical circuit and providing say an input voltage that is much, much greater than what the circuit would expect would have the effect of physically uh, sort of blowing up our digital model of the circuit. Obviously, in the digital domain, we don't have that kind of risk because we can just simply reset our simulation. But in particular, with the diode anti-parallel, um, a diode is an exponential uh, 
a, an exponential nonlinear element. So if we try to uh, press an incredibly large current through or uh, an incredibly large uh, voltage across, the diode will explode. And that's what happens with this function. If I were to remove the input protection, you'll see that we can actually uh, go get so large of uh, values inside of our model that it would uh, go past the limit of a float in Faust, which is very large and explode to effectively infinity or not a number. Um, so in order to do that, I've added some input protection, which prevents, uh, levels going above a certain level on the input, as well as a, some gain correction in particular, if it's a guitar pedal, it's going to, ex uh, expect incredibly small voltages on the input. So you'll notice that I'm, uh, reducing the initial gain of the input signal by a lot since, uh, we would expect only a couple millivolts on the input, but uh, we would be accepting just numerically from the digital process, probably between negative one and one on the input. So I'm going to go ahead and run it and I'll use this audio file. And what we have here is an on, which is representing the bypass for our pedal. And if we turn it on, we get a little bit of a gain boost, but mostly uh, we're just getting distortion. And this is not the regular square distortion. This is actually based on the diode itself. And if we reduce it, our distortion increases our distortion. And these uh, UI controls correlate to controls on the pedal. Um, those of you who are familiar with the Tube Screamer are probably wondering where the tone control is, and that's part of a different portion of the circuit, which is not simulated with this wave digital model. I'll go ahead and uh, input a 440 sine wave, and if we look over here, we can uh, take a look at what our distortion character looks like. And you can see we're actually getting the diode-like distortion of the soft clipping rather than the hard clipping that you would see in the digital domain if we were to exceed the bounds. Which, by all accounts, I think is pretty cool. The last portion of sort of modern fundamental wave digital model theory that I want to cover is something called SPQR tree decomposition, which is a more mathematical process for determining the exact connection tree. Um, in particular, once we get into more complex circuits, it becomes very challenging to just sort of inspect the circuit and know where we want to place the adapters. So instead, we perform an inspection of the circuit's graph, break it down into component parts, form a tree, and then this is what the wave digital model will look like. <sighs> so to get a little bit more in depth, what's going on here is, for those of you who aren't familiar with a circuit's graph, um, a circuit graph is a graph of the circuit in which each edge corresponds to a component in the circuit and each node corresponds to a wire or connections between the components. Um, you can see here, edge one is corresponding to our voltage source, edge two is corresponding to our resistor one, and node A is corresponding to the ground wire here, which connects the bottom of our voltage source, the bottom of the capacitor, and the bottom of the other capacitor. Decomposing this, what we do is look for edges which are in series or parallel. Specifically, what you do is look through the graph and remove sets of nodes to see if this breaks the graph into two pieces. So for example, if we look at nodes four and five, if we were to remove their connections to C and A, that would break the graph entirely into two separate pieces. Um, so what we do is it, we break the graph into two separate pieces 
and then draw a virtual edge along this and along the connection between four and five. So you can see here what that looks like. Here, edge three has a virtual edge two prime drawn along it. And then we see the same two prime edge drawn from components four to five, and they've been separated into two pieces. You perform this process until it can uh, no longer occur and the graph has been broken down into fundamental uh, structures which can no longer be uh, represented with more simple structures like series and parallel. And what we're left here is a set of graphs of generally three different types. Series, corresponding to S, parallel, corresponding to P, and one that you don't see in this specific uh, structure called rigid. In our wave digital filter, this is going to correspond to our series nodes and our parallel nodes, and again, not seen here, our rigid nodes. The tree structure, what you're going to see is all of the original edges become nodes. We denote in this case, node one, which is our voltage source, if you remember, as our root node. And then all of the all of the other components become leaf nodes, two, three, four, and five. Then internal to the tree are connection nodes, series, parallel, series, rigid, etc. Um, and then inside of the tree, they're going to be connected by virtual edges, uh, like one prime, two prime, etc. Um, you can see here, if we look, we denoted this as our series node, and it still retains the same connections. Edge 1, edge 2, and edge 1 prime. You can see edge 2, edge 1, and edge 1 prime. Then this circles all the way back to our final wave digital model in which the voltage source is the root. Then edge 2, which has come through the process here, and it started out as R1, is R1 again. Um, so this is important specifically for the decomposition of more complex circuits, as I already mentioned, which cannot be decomposed into always the simplest adapter types. Um, for example, here you see a rigid adapter in which we can no longer uh, remove any edges or s remove any connections to nodes and separate this graph any farther. It, it, the, no the edges are rigidly connected. The problem here is that there are a great many different possible types of rigid adapters and they must be derived separately to be implemented in a wave digital structure or a wave digital model. Now, it's not really within the scope of the workshop to talk about that derivation process. If you're interested, I would encourage you to check out the, um, the paper referenced below uh, where the figures are from. But uh, I am working to actively support these kinds of adapters in the library itself. And this is really important because these adapters can be used for uh, doing things such as op amps. Uh, the so this circuit specifically is the Fender Baseman Tone Stack, which is uh, the equalizer circuit that you see on, on the input of the Fender Baseman guitar amplifier. So here in our Faust IDE, we have the six port scattering matrix, which is associated with the rigid adapter found in the Fender Baseman Tone Stack. You'll notice that I've left six resistances as parameters, and these are our upward facing port resistances. The input to this function is treated as a uh, six element vector, which is then left multiplied by the scattering matrix to support the creation, easy creation of other scattering matrices, I've implemented uh, several generic node functions. Here, since we're using it as the root element, we use the u underscore, which is the unadapted prefix. It will automatically generate the associated node for the wave digital structure. It is expected for this function to have for example, for a six port scattering matrix, it's expected to have uh, six parameter inputs. Uh, 
for the upward facing port resistance and also six inputs for the incident waves and it will give six outputs um other than that this is a direct implementation of the model i showed earlier um where what you can see is we're using our u underscore six port as the root of our tree. It is downwardly connected to six subtrees, all of conventional wave digital filter structures. Um, you'll notice here, I've set up a couple of potentiometers, which are representing the potentiometer values, which would be found on the Fender Basement tone stack. Um, and then I'm also adding a few, a, a little bit of resistance where necessary in order to prevent uh, zeroing out, which would break the model itself. Um, having, for example, a resistance that is zero will create divide by zero errors in the model and break it. Um, so if we run this, uh, I'll go ahead and demonstrate just using some pink noise uh, a little bit. And presumably, if you were to, say, input your guitar signal into this, it would behave very similar to the actual Fender Basement Tone Stack. So the last thing that I want to get into a little bit before uh, going into sort of some of the more advanced aspects of the library's internal uh, logic and functioning, I want to talk about sort of the capacity to circuit bend and Faust because that's really one of, in my idea, my mind, the coolest things about this library. So Faust is uh, very functional and very modular on its own, but I've also really tried to work to make it such that the library can do that as well. I've already talked a little bit about this with uh, the first filter that we looked at, say, creating it, making it be a signal controlled filter just by leaving the uh, cutoff frequency as an empty input. But you can also do things uh, like just mess around with the wave digital structure as well. Any unadapted node can be substituted with any other unadapted node. Any adapted node can be substituted with any other relevant adapted component node, etc. As long as the number of connections within the tree and the rules of the connection tree are continued. Um, similarly, if you wanted to change different aspects of the circuit, uh, that's really easy to do. Any single uh, component can have anything as its uh, component value as long as it's declared explicitly. If you wanted to make a uh, a function that uh, the, an inductor that has, say, a, a sine at 1000 hertz, that's perfectly legal to do. Um, and honestly, I have no idea what this will sound like, if it will even sound like anything. Well, looks like we broke the model itself. Oh, that's probably because uh, our it's it's going below zero. So I'll just do absolute value plus one. There we go. Sure, that, that's not, uh, I'll do plus point oh 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 one. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. And now. You know, it didn't impact functionality as much as I expected, honestly. I can't really hear anything different with it. But again, you might run into very strange cases or um, things like that. The other thing is I've created a set of functions um, which are going to be published with the next uh, iteration of the library, which can pretty much take any node or take any Faust function and turn it into a library node provided a couple of different things. Um, now there's going to be more documentation on these functions coming out, but this sort of gives people the capacity to really turn anything into a node. This is something which I hope people have the opportunity to break and mess around with in very strange ways and create some really cool stuff. So, to get a little bit more into the advanced functionality of the library, I want to take a look at um, exactly what's going on. Um, so 
generic nodes are broken down into three different cases. Um, you can see here we're accessing our first index, uh, the index parameter, which is accessed by the compiler, and we're declaring uh, three different portions based on the scattering matrix of the node. So in, in wave digital filter theory, uh, nodes are classically defined by a scattering matrix, um, particularly adaptable nodes, and uh, various properties of the scattering matrix will denote whether the node is adaptable or not, etc. Um, and really all the library does is put them into, break them down into three different portions. One of which, which, uh, computes the upward going waves. One of which, which is the, the one case, the zero case computes the downward going waves. And then the two case will feed the upward facing port resistance of a, an element to the library. So I'm going to go ahead and return to our simple thing, uh, simple model or our simpler model. And I'm actually going to make it even simpler here by going ahead. I'm going to remove R1 and C2, and then I'm going to just condense down to R1 and C2. So this is now a first order, I believe. That should be the correct number. Um, and now we're reduced um, just to a very simple model. Um, so here, what you can see is the series, the our three port, which is the wave digital dot series uh, uh, node is broken down into two different portions, uh, a downward portion and an upward going portion each of which is fed the uh, up port res, the upward facing port resistance, which is computed automatically from our R1 and C2 values. Um, so this is how we achieve the automatic adapting properties of the library. And seem, uh, similarly, our voltage input is also automatically fed an upward facing port resistance, which uses the series, which is R1 plus R2, as well as uh, this to automatically compute upward facing port resistance. Um, similarly, this is automatically doing routing. You can't see much of it here, but we have basically, uh, instead of having waves going up from C1 to C2, they go all the way around. And this is where our unit delays occur and that eliminate the delay free loops in our final model. So to take a look at our build function, what's actually going out here, the function build tree, which builds the model is taking um, our model as an input in the form a colon B. Um, and it's going to build the downward going part, which is this portion. And then it's combined recursively with the upward going part which is this portion. And then also the out generates a uh, crossover, which will eliminate all of these signals, uh, the state vectors from being fed forward. What we're doing is recursively inspecting each level of the connection tree, and then from it generating a node's uh, upward or downward going element, the inputs to which are either a, um, are the uh, relevant values and the upward facing port resistance, which is generated again through another inspection. And then finally, uh, some extra crossover steps, which will deal with any necessary signal routing, which would be an issue otherwise. We're using a lot of advanced pattern matching functionality in order to generate uh, these things, even the crossover, uh, is just a very, very advanced, uh, pattern matching function, which again, will generate a proper crossover based on various aspects of the tree. Um, if these are things which are interesting to people, um, I'd be more than happy to talk about them in a bit more depth. Uh, perhaps in the Q&A if people have specific questions. But 
uh, hopefully these are things which will have uh, very little impact on just use of the library and are more about uh, interesting aspects of wave digital models in Faust moving forward. Um, one of the really cool aspects of Faust is that this results in purely instructional code, which is to say that the there, there's no tree traversal in the final code. There's no loops. Um, it's just a set of ordered instructions for computing the behavior of the model. Um, effectively, all of the computational intensity associated with the connection tree itself is front-loaded into the Faust compiler, which is capable of just inspecting all of the relevant elements and then creating the final resulting instructional code itself. Um, I'm still working on doing tests to figure out if this is substantially faster than existing methods for uh, implementation, in particular comparisons to uh, Max Rest's uh, C++ library, uh, RT-WDF, which you can find on GitHub. Finally, I just want to go over what I'm hoping to do with wavedigitalmodels.lib in the future. Um, hopefully, at the time of publication, the additions it, uh, listed in the 0.2 will be live and available to everyone, but it may be as long as a week or two before these go completely live, uh, just simply for reasons of checking and uh, confirming that everything is correct. Um, and that's going to add a bunch of stuff, especially our type adapters for uh, simple cases. So for example, the tone stack adapter will be available um, as well as uh, some adapters for op amps, I hope, um, which will allow people to do simple op amp configurations without having to uh, redo a ton of work. And uh, also, the generic node creation functions will be made available in that library. And finally, the documentation, which I mentioned earlier, which will hopefully make things prettier, more uh, readable, and fix some errors and typos that were present in the current version. Um, and then in terms of future editions, I'm really hoping to publish the scripts, which I mentioned, which will help derive our type adapters so that folks who don't want to deal with the extensive math associated with their derivation will uh, be able to hopefully do that a little more easily just by knowing the circuits graph. Um, and the other thing, Additionally, I'm really hoping to develop, and this is something that's in active de development right now, is internal functions for multiport nonlinearities. Basically, uh, once uh, a user has an R-type, I'm hoping to provide a different build function, which could, example, add like a tube to your R-type or add a, uh, a transistor to your R-type. Uh, or add multiple diodes, things like that, which would allow for uh, basically really easy modular use of these elements, which is something that hasn't really been available in the past. I'm really trying to focus right now on expanding library functionality, but soon I'm also happy, hoping to publish uh, examples uh, as uh, I'm working on more complex things, I will definitely publish the uh, results so that people can modify or circuit bend as they are interested in them. So finally, just uh, a couple of details on references. Um, for general knowledge, I would really encourage you to refer to Kurt Werner's thesis um, as well as uh, his IEEE papers. Um, they've published a lot of the techniques that I've talked about, and I use them as a direct source when creating the library and uh, dealing with issues and learning the technique myself. Um, for the Tube Screamer specifically, I've already mentioned this, but uh, the improved and generalized diode clipboard model paper. 
Um, if you're interested in checking out a modern implementation example, I would really recommend uh, the Zhang, Zhang paper, uh, Real-Time Digital Simulation of Cascaded Vacuum Tube Amplifiers Using Modified Blockwise Method. Um, it's a really interesting advanced look at uh, applications of these techniques. Many of these techniques are just completely developed as a result of DAFX. And I would be totally remiss not to mention that uh, conference. Um, I would I have read many, many DAFX publications in creating this library and would really encourage uh, anyone to read those publications if they're interested in this technique. Um, there's wave digital modeling stuff that's really recent that just came out in August, which is uh, detailing new work on these techniques. And there's really amazing stuff being done by tons of really cool people all over the world in this. Um, and then finally, uh, many, many thanks to Romain Michon and Graham, uh, especially for uh, allowing me to present my work and uh, this library as an undergraduate. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. Also, many thanks to Kurt Werner, who uh, really directly has supported uh, me in learning wave digital filters. Uh, Julia Smith as well. Uh, I've really appreciated all of the uh, like help and encouragement. Also, the Faust Slack, uh, who was invaluable in um, working to uh, answer some of my more weird questions and weird bugs that were encountered when uh, developing the advanced aspects of the library. And finally, uh, many, many thanks to Rob Owen and my advisor and Eli Stein, my uh, private teacher, as well as uh, Oberlin College. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and I will hopefully be in momentarily to answer any questions that you have.